Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I discuss the various sources of our anxiety, and we discuss this week's message in our series entitled Disquiet. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching. A little more subdued today, yeah, Pastor John. Yeah, we are uh, we're here on Tuesday, and exactly at nine o'clock, you can hear the bells tolling in the background, probably, and uh, a little bit earlier than our typical time to record because there's no staff meeting today. Right. And uh, but it's par- primarily we're we're staring down the the barrel of a. Big hurricane, big, big hurricane, big hurricane. So, it is a, uh, it is a. It was not obviously we didn't plan the hurricane, but a, appropriate that we're in this sermon series yeah. on anxiety. We've had this will be the second one we've had in this in this in, in series. Two weeks, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, 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 we've had people. Um, I know, I know, people have come up to you and said, "Wow, it's uh, this is an appropriate series when you're looking at." You know, yeah, category yeah. four, category three, category five, depending on what 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 day you're yeah. listening to this. Um, uh, yeah, not, not not a welcome thing, of course. And no. so, so it's like it's like praying for it's like talking about patience and praying for patience and getting opportunities to practice yeah, we patience. Don't, we don't, so we don't really want to do that. Yeah, don't pray for that. <laughs> yeah, don't pray yeah. for patience. But don't. this this is uh, talking about disquiet and disruption and anxiety and yeah. And now we are in the middle of a of a situation yeah. where we have to. Practice it. Practice it. And, you know, we've covered a lot of different types of anxiety and stress yeah. in this series. Yeah. And uh, this week is no exception. You and I both talked about how when Paul in Second Corinthians 12 is dealing with this thorn in the flesh, this is a persistent sort of anxiety. Yeah. But there's also all, all, all kinds of different situations that will cause anxious moments. I mean, you, you yeah. described your friend uh, in your sermon this week with uh, bladder, bladder cancer, cancer. Um, which is a persistent, obviously it's a persistent stress that's ongoing. And then there's the ones that are just kind of out of the blue. You right. know, you have a car accident and all of a sudden stressful, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you have ones that are like this hurricane. It's There's an uncertainty about what it's going to be, right? Yeah. I mean, we've seen these before. You've been in Florida a long time yeah. where it's coming right for you and then it moves. Yeah. Or it's not coming for you and then it last minute it moves. And so yeah, how do you deal with those different types of anxieties the, or the different situations that that cause anxiety. The are there ones that you? I don't. Know, we never prefer them, right? I mean, yeah. There's, there's no yeah. like, yes, that's the one I want. But are there ones that you're, you'd rather have, get caught off guard, yeah. or would you rather see it coming? You know, how do you? Isn't see it interesting that? though that your question itself just reminds us that there are different sources of our anxiety, yeah. and some of them, some of them are situational, some of them are short-term, some of them are long-term, like we talked about this week. And I think maybe part of the answer to the question is is, is that, is yeah. just being able to be self-reflective enough about the source of our anxiety to be able to say, okay, what is this thing? Yeah. Is this something that is... And Peter, Peter's was a, his was situational. Yeah. It was a personal failure on his part. And it was real. And it was real. Yeah, it was real. And it was, it was devastating to him. Yeah. But in a short matter of time, short, short period of time, he had been fully restored and just turned loose to go and, yeah, we're and be the like, church leader. Depending on how, how long it was between the resurrection and that moment on the beach, we're not sure at what period of, you know, how many days, but it was within 40 days, 50 days. Yeah, less than that, because the ascension ascension happens after that, right? Yeah, so some of them are short-lived, some of them are are ongoing, but I think think part of it is just being being able to be self-reflective enough about the fact that I have anxiety. Yeah, yeah. And there are times where, you know, you look at like, the very first week where there's Elijah, he, he has a real source of anxiety, and yet there is a there's a bit of um, 
imagined anxiety that, you know, imagined stress because he's, you know, if you look back at that passage from first Kings, you know, or what is or second Kings, what is he doing? Right. He's just defeated the Baal prophets. Yeah. He's just had, he's just seen the source of God's strength. And yet immediately he's feeling the stress of this human yeah, queen. Yeah. I mean, come on. Right. So it was like, really? Given like, what you've just seen, how yeah. can you be feeling what you're feeling right now? But I love that because we do the same thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that this is a little bit how this, how sometimes these hurricanes feel, right? Because are they real? Yes. Are, are they destructive? Yes. Um, are are we as as indiv- we live very much in, in inland? Um, is it going to you know all the, the the tracks and things that we see when they start talking about the extreme devita- devastation? I mean, yeah, what are they always? Yeah. What are they most concerned about? Storm surge. Those are things we don't have to really worry about. Yeah, yeah. Storm if, surge, flooding, and then of course wind, and yeah, wind damage, and, some, and ground saturation. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, and I, I love. I think it was two weeks ago you said in your sermon that, that depression is when you look backwards yeah. and you think about all the things that, that went wrong yeah. and you just really come to the conclusion that, that there is something fundamentally wrong about you. Anxiety is when you look forward and you think about all the possible things that could go, could wrong. go wrong. And those things like, uh, and that, and that's a great, when you mentioned, um, uh, uh, Elijah, that yeah. was Elijah in that yeah. moment. He's thinking that even though I've just seen this really unbelievably amazing thing where God came in, lit the fires, and did all the work that he did, and all the prophets of Baal went away, I still can't stop myself from thinking, yes, but yeah. in the future, it may not go that way. In the future, Jezebel is a powerhouse, and, yeah. she, and she may well not do harm. So I, I, it's, it's, it's helpful, I think, to, to, to see that, to see yeah. that you know our anxiety may actually be more... Not to take anything away from what is real, like you said, yeah. it's a real storm. But part of it is just the possible outcomes, outcomes yeah. including up to and including our personal harm or yeah. our family members' personal harm. And uh, and part of what we've been saying in the series is that that God is not an, a, apart from that, and God has something to say to us in the middle of all of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, where it gets the the sources of anxiety where they get, and, and maybe this is true for everybody, but I, I know for myself, it's it's when when there is this, when the, when there's a persistent stress, you know, persistent anxiety and the anticipation of what could be all yeah. at the same time. I mean, yeah. the reason I think for us, and, and I'll just speak for myself, the reason for me that things like the stress of like a hurricane is so palpable is because there is the anticipation of what could happen. It may not, but what could happen. But then there's also the, rem- the, the memory of what has, has happened. I mean, yeah. we've been through these before. The you reason know. why we think that it could happen is because we've seen that it did happen. Yeah. And, we've, and I've been through hurricanes. Uh, this is my, yeah. in, in my adulthood, this is my sixth one. Yeah. Since, since I've been an adult in, in Central Florida, in Polk County, this is the sixth one. Um, over the course of my life, I think it's probably more like eight, eight to ten, and that's not yeah, including same. tropical yeah. storms and name storms, things like that. But it's uh, there are some that come uh, come through, and yeah, it's it's a bad weather event, but it, the the tragedy level mm-hmm. is not nearly as high, you know, yeah. as it could have been, you know, but then there are others where, you know, we have to get a roof replaced and we have to get floors. Yeah, and so you, you have the, the post-traumatic have stress disorder of that goes in. So I think those are the ones that, and I, and, and I, you know, like your friend with the, with the cancer diagnosis, you know, having that mentality of what is God going to do through this does take an incredible amount of faith consistently. Cause I'm sure there are days where he feels very strong and very faith filled. Yeah. And then there are other days where he's weak. It's yeah. the, it's the, he feels the, yeah. he feels the vulnerability and, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. This, this storm has, um, has taken its toll on me and I, mm-hmm. and I, here, this is my confession. I loved you had some, your own confession in the, in the, in this, in the sermon on Sunday. But my confession is that, is that I'm not, I'm one of those who's not, Tend, doesn't tend to be terribly self-aware about the fact that I am yeah. feeling stress or that I am anxious or that I do have I can't or even can identify the source of it. But this one's pretty clear. Yeah. And so uh, th- this one is like a toothache. It is. It is. It is hanging around. You know it's there. It hurts. Yeah. You know you feel it. Um. And uh. And and you know this that something's got to be resolved with it. So yeah. uh. So so I again all the more reason to be uh, uh j- just to be in a series like we're in right now because it does remind us that the, that that we're all, and you said it at the end of your sermon, we're all dealing with some, some sort of thorn in our flesh. We're all dealing with some sort of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and especially, 
especially, especially if, for if us right state, now. If yeah. You're in the state of Florida, especially right now. But I, even if you're not, there's some source of, of anxiety, stress, pain, a thorn. Um, but anyway, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to get back. We're going to talk specifically about Paul, thorn in the flesh from 2 Corinthians 12. So we will be back in just a moment. And we're back. So, Pastor John, you know, we were dealing with a very different uh, passage this week. You know, still in the New Testament, but as you pointed out, and I really liked how you pointed out in your your, ser- your sermon, and then you just mentioned it now how, and I didn't think about this even until I heard your, your message, how different Paul Paul's situation is and his anxiety and his stress and his pain point mm-hmm. Versus Peter, for example, you know, because um, Peter's is self-inflicted. You know, it's like yeah. my wife will say it's an own goal, right? I mean, it's it's the you own, own, you it's own a, it. <laughs> well, it's the own goal, like in soccer where you kick it into your own net. You know, oh, that, yeah. that, that, it's an own goal, right? And and Paul's is not. I mean, Paul's yeah. had this incredible vision, this yeah. in, in, incredible conversion experience, and then this incredible vision. And then he he's given this thorn in the flesh that yeah. he, how he describes it. And there's a lot of places we could go, but I, I I wonder how you decided how to set this up. You know, you talked a little bit about the background of Paul, and I was I I found myself struggling like what details what, what do, do I, I say put be, as as a lead into this because yeah. it's if you're just dropped into this story in Second Corinthians twelve, it's like. Wait, where yeah. did this come? Why is yeah. he telling the story? So you have to a- answer the question: Why is he telling the story about the vision and then the thorn? Um, so how did you decide what well, part, let me parts just, in his backstory you're going to talk, th- talk was about? A, uh, this was different than any of these in this series so far. In in this way, it's different in that it wasn't a very satisfying no, sermon. Yeah, 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 and it wasn't satisfying for all the reasons you talked about and I talked yeah. about. Is because what what would what would have been a satisfying sermon? Would have been a satisfying passage. Would have been thorn is gone. Thorn is gone. Well, so you even said in your in your message, and I like how you paint. It's like this is not this is not the this is not the marquee thing that you you know you put on the front lawn. Comes you know come to FPC where yeah. you can suffer. We but can suffer with with yeah. each other or yeah. suffer together. Yeah, yeah. I loved how you put that because I'm like, no, it really isn't. That's not what we like to. Nobody likes to preach that, and right? yet it's real. And that's like I think yeah. that's what's the strength of a message like this. Uh, and we both did it in our own ways, but it's it's so real. Mm-hmm. It is such a lived experience, and there are there are and you know it just because you live. Yeah. And so my my approach to this was it's not a very satisfying passage to begin with, and it's a bit of it's a bit a odd passage. Yeah. And he starts with this <laughs> yeah. with this vision, yeah. and he's doing it in the third person, and he's and it's his visions and revelation, and and you know what's that all about? And I think we both kind of landed in the same thing that really was kind of setting the stage for his own authority yeah. uh, with that. So you just, you sort of have to unpack it. And so the, your question about how much color do you put in what ahead of time. the background too? Like what, how, what's the, you know, when you, I don't know about you, when I start doing the notes for my, for my message and I get, you know, I'm looking at the passage that we're talking about. I always go back and say, okay, what's the background yeah. That I'm going to highlight yeah. leading into how far this. back do you go? How, how much of a running back? start yeah. do you get? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, then, and how much of those background elements do you put your weight on? Because I mean, there's a ton that you could have put your weight right. on. I could put my weight on, and yeah, it's just oof. yeah, no. It, and in, and in the live services, I I backed up to the Corinthians correspondence. I mean, I start oh, I started with big pictures. Wow, this is yeah. a series of conversations between Paul. He's gotcha. away, and then back in there, and they're having these conversations. That some of the things they brought up, some of the things that Paul wants to bring up, and then I zoned in and zeroed in onto more of the second second Corinthians things. Yeah. And just uh, so yeah, it it was just a matter of picking enough color to get it into yeah. get a war- running start into because there was there was a lot there's a lot of different things that were going on in this passage going into this passage. Yeah, and I think we both kind of talked a, more about, you know, 
where Paul had been as a, as a Jewish leader, persecutor of the church. At various points in our messages, we talked about that, talked about his conversion experience, yeah. those, those being highlighted, and then the persecution that he was facing from within the church, from various teachers and, and even the own con- there, you know, in, in that congregation, yeah. trying to discredit him. Um, but even there, there's so many different points of detail you could or, you know, you could have included, I could have included. It's not, it wasn't very satisfying to, to, to name even even just name them in yeah. a list because for every one of those item, so bullet big. points there's whole there's whole stories and whole Huge. volumes of things can be said about each one of them so yeah. you feel like you're doing some injustice to it but at the same time you also know you it's helpful to get yeah. that running start into the passage yeah and i think one of the things that is very similar to last week in terms of that you know from that aspect of the message the the background uh, with Paul and then last week with Peter is there is so much colorful background, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's so many different colorful details because they have very interesting backstories, a very, uh, interesting personalities that come through in the text. I mean, that's the thing I think that is so profound about our scriptures is how, the, the the writers how God has has chosen to inspire the human authors to let the human characters be human yeah. and not flatten them to these you know yeah. ultra heroes you see this, characters yeah. Yeah, yeah you see this in other in other I'm gonna use scripture in air quotes here other scriptures you know like uh, from other religions where a lot of times the the heroes of their faith are flattened to two because they don't want to highlight any Flaws Warts or flaws yeah, or yeah. or even any personality or struggles. Or, yeah. I, mean, I, I love how Paul. I, I love Paul especially is is pretty pretty oh. upfront about the struggles that he has. This this whole passage was the thorn in the flesh was one, although it's a mystery. We both yeah. talked about what exactly that was, but so were his his persecution. I mean, at that first first. Um, uh, uh, Philippians in yeah. Philippians uh, yeah. when he talks about uh, I, I can do all things through through Christ who strengthens me just before that it yes, says right. <laughs> I know what it's like to suffer that's I've right. had all these great tremendous experiences that's here right. that's a that's a theme yeah, for Paul and that does make him a a man with feet of clay you know you yeah. really get a sense of the humanity of Paul when you when you read stories like Second uh, Corinthians and you know, and the Corinthians correspondence in general because he's he's dealing with the Apollos. You, yeah, I think you mentioned the Apollos, um, yeah. uh, Paul, and, and Jesus thing. Who, who am I going to actually follow? Yeah, you know. So and, that's a that, there's conflict in the yeah. church. So he's just dealing with it in a very earthy, real way, and that helps us earthy, real humans. Yeah, and you even mentioned some of the the you know it, it, the passage where he talks about all the all of the anxieties that he feels. You know, where he talks about I know what it's to be in hunger, and, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and and besides all of these, I love that that one. And that was actually when you talk about how you architect a, a sermon series, and I'm sure you do the same thing when you're architecting out a sermon series. You have to decide, okay, what passages of Scripture really illustrate or, or really speak to mm-hmm. what we are what we feel like is the overarching faith principle we're trying to get at. And that was one where Paul talks about the 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 anxiety he feels for all of the yeah, the, the, the yeah. church all the time he yeah. carries it in his body he says right yeah. I mean um, and so I love that you included that to say no Paul actually feels a great deal of stress about a lot of different things a lot of the time and yet he doesn't he does not hold on to that in such a way that it diminishes his ability to live into the faith that God's yeah. given him. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's you so think much about of that. this. You ever think about this? That raises a great question, and, and just something for you all to think about. Maybe we'll add it to the questions in the next segment here. Yeah. It's like, um, how much stress do we actually, are we aware that we actually live with on an ongoing oh, basis? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That low level, that, yeah. Yeah, that's always there. I, mm-hmm. I, I had a friend who was an anesthesiologist. Uh, he retired uh, as, a, as, a, as a medical doctor and began doing a lot of golfing. And, and I saw him maybe, I don't know, three months later after, after he'd retired and said, Jack, how's, you know, how's, how's it going? What do, what do you notice that's different? He goes, I did not, I was not aware of, and this is the question I think would be mm-hmm. interesting for group members to talk about. He said, I was not aware of 
how much stress I carried around with me. Yeah. He said, literally, people's lives are in my hands. If yeah. I screw up, they're, they're dead. Yeah. And he said, and I just the awareness that, that you know you do that all day long, and you do that you know, five, six days a week, and you do it you know year after year. He said, for 30, 40 years or so, I carried around that level of stress. You carry around a lot of stress yeah. in the role that you were in as a, as a leader yeah. in the church. Yeah. I, I carry yeah. around a lot, a lot of stress in the role that I'm in, in as a church. And you know, it's one of those things where you go, okay, be self-aware of that. I'm not terribly self-aware about that. That's mm-hmm. one thing. Be self aware about that but also uh n- know that there's a day coming yeah when and i'm not talking about retirement now because <laughs> <laughs> plenty of people are still stressful in retirement that's right and uh but there's a day coming where where that is all gone yeah yeah I, one thing i i, I do want to ask you about because i i know i know I know <laughs> you and I both had to struggle with this because there's, again, so much in this passage. What what were the things detail-wise, and I heard it in yours, I heard, I, I felt it myself, I'm sure you heard it in mine, the details that, man, you just want to dig in. Oh, yeah. if, if, again, yeah. this, is the, the, this is the conversation we have pretty much every week. If this was a Bible study yeah. and you got 45 minutes or maybe even a month to just talk about this one section... You know where where are you going to spend your time leaning into uh, in, in this in this? Passage? I think I would have I would have unpacked the other visions and revelations and yeah. see, seen this in contrast to this this vision in contrast to the other visions and revelations that, has, that Paul yeah. has. Mm-hmm. I think I would have spent some time on the sufficient grace of God. I made what a reference to it. What does sufficient yeah, mean? And, yeah. and mm-hmm. why is that said? And why mm-hmm. is that the response of God? I, I think I would have spent spent some more time on. I think you you spent more time on this than I did. I spent more time on. Uh, what does it mean when God says no to a to a prayer, yeah. which is clearly Paul prayed three three times. I, I just glanced over that in this series and the sermon. So uh, those are three that come to mind yeah. right right off the bat. How yeah. about you? I think the sufficiency part that was the one I was struggling with because I really wanted to put that in there. You know, the the word sufficient in the Greek there is actually um, a filled. It's like the the image of a filled cup. You know, it's like the cup is is right there to the top. Yeah. It's not overflowing. It's yeah. not it's not diminished, but there's it's there, but it's a my the, quick reference to that was contentment. Yeah, you know, the, 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 there's a sense of being full, up on things. Yeah, but I had in my head like, you know, what if every cup of coffee or every like, you know, cup of water you had, as soon as you took a drink out of it, you set it down, it was already back yeah. to the top. You know, you never had to go that yeah. that that idea of Perfect sufficiency temperature and everything. Yeah, yeah. and I I, lo- I really love that image, and there's a lot you could do illustratively with that, but yeah. it just was like. I just didn't have how time. About on, you did. You did do a little bit of this, but uh, how 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 much fun would it have been to have uh, unpacked the thorn in the flesh detail? All, like, all the like options. Like what could it have been, and yeah. why? And we both kind of just glanced over the 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 guesses, right? Yeah. Um, which some guesses have more merit than others, right? I mean, yeah. I think the some of the physical ones that we both talked about, the speech impediment thing that we talked about, um, yeah. the blindness thing, because there, there, there's evidence that maybe Paul had some eyesight issues. I, I'm yeah. less inclined to believe that because it doesn't seem like he yeah. was... It doesn't seem like he was hiding that from people, or he, you know. I think yeah. the thorn was was. I don't know. I, and, it it would have been a lot and, of fun. And, to, and but, the merit of, of of it could have been a person. It could have yeah, been several been people. Per, could have yeah, been you, the Judaizers. Could yeah. have been Alexander the you, Coppersmith. I love, that I, I love mentioned. how you add that detail because they're like, wait a minute. Now you. I know people listening to your message went like. Googled it, like, <laughs> like now, because it helped them dig deeper. I love that you put that yeah, in there. Yeah, so it's just, you know it, that that would have been fun yeah. to unpack. Yeah, and 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 I think. Um, that those are all fun little details, but again, and we have to make this decision, the fun details that you maybe dig into yeah. in a Bible study become distractions in a, a message. When you're where, trying to art, get an you know, overall arch, yeah. ar- overarching theme especially, preached. Especially with the theme of, like you said, not, you know, the, the, the pain points, the, the pains are not meaningless, and, and, yeah. that, and that is not an easy pill for people to swallow yeah. and it very it's very dis- it can be very distracting to go into all those details when you really want people to wrestle with this very 
um, uneasy truth. Yeah. It's true. Uneasy truth is a yeah. great way of saying yeah. it. I don't know if I said it. I think I said it in the in the recording. Uh, but uh, you know, this is for you, you to accept this idea of this kitsugi, as I say it. Kitsugi, the kitsugi. Yeah. You know, it's pieced back together to be something even more beautiful, but it's not the pain and or the thorn is not gone away. Yeah. You just piece it back together to do something beautiful with it, or the, the the thought that there's not it's not meaningless or that there's some purpose purpose in that. That is not that that what I said in the, in the message that that takes maturity. That takes, takes a, a spiritual maturity. That yeah. is that that not everybody's ready for that. And I, and I love, that was much on my mind. Yeah, and and I think the thing that got me this time around. I mean, I've I've taught through this past I've read this passage I tons of times you mm-hmm. have too it's it's um, and I I go back to it even my personal devotions quite a bit because I because it's so mm-hmm. difficult mm-hmm. but the one that got me this time is I, I don't remember which commentary I was reading there's several commentaries that that highlighted that the 14 years that he puts in there this yeah, idea yeah, you of why spent some time on that and it's because that it doesn't seem like he, he it I always read this passage as he's got this thorn, he cries out three times one night, Jesus yeah. says no, and then he's okay with it. Then he's uh, moves on happily. And then I'm like, but no, the fourteen years is really significant. The commentaries are like, no, this is more than likely he's including that to demonstrate that this was an ongoing yeah. several and it's not like he, he said it one time and it's like three different segments of his life he was begging for this to go over yeah. the course of fourteen potential. I mean that's that was the that was the the interpretation there. So I, I, I think that was helpful because it, it like to your point, it takes maturity. And maturity only comes if you if you're disciplined to go back through the process over and over and over and over again. It does not happen all at once. Yeah. It is a process. It is it is a 14-year I, I, journey. I, I think we ask I think we ask ourselves and we ask our people to do something difficult this week. We did. Uh, that uh, and our, and, yeah, I think and, ourselves and, is right too. No, right? Yeah, I, I put myself right there, but <laughs> yeah. I, I and, and and maybe I should say this, but we ask them to do something more difficult than we I mean I think in some ways we always, always we're always do, challenging yeah. to do something mm-hmm. difficult that is out maybe uncomfortable, but this one was probably one of the more uncomfortable mm-hmm. messages because it forces you to do what you just said. Go back to that hard place and just spend some time there. Yeah. Camp out there. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Well, we'll take a short break. Take a break. And then we are get back to personal devotion group time. If you're having group this week or next week, I, I know a lot of folks are canceled, but this might be good for just your personal devotion in the next couple of days, uh, especially this passage. Yeah. Wrestle with this passage, uh, especially for our listeners here in uh, Florida. But we'll take a short break, and we'll get back in just a moment. Everybody, we're back, and uh, while we know many groups are probably not meeting uh, this week, um, we do know some that might be meeting virtually. Um, I've heard of that happening. Some people are like, hey, let's just get together over Zoom tomorrow sure. um, while they still have power, pray together. Um, I encourage people, if they're not, haven't thought about that, th- to do there that. At least, Zoom, at least, Zoom option. Uh, Zoom option. While, while we have it. While you have it. Um, but uh, for those that are in a group, maybe next week they're still using this material, or they're just, you know, in the next couple of days, they're going to find themselves with some time on their hands. They've done all their prep work, and they're praying to, you know, what where do we go with this for people individually, you know? And I think you just said it a moment ago, just for folks to be self-aware yeah. about their stress level, you know, yeah. as, especially as they're facing down this storm. But we also know that this hurricane is not the only stressor in people's lives right yeah. now. I mean, it's yeah. the biggest one. It's the most prominent one. Probably but what a most, great exercise yeah. to, 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 to just sit down on your own or sit down with a group or a couple uh, and just say, okay, what are even, um, even just write it out. You know, what am, yeah. what are the things that bring me stress right now? Yeah. yeah. What, what's that source of anxiety inside of me? That would be helpful. And, and along with that, just asking the question, if it's that, that's, that's kind of low level, almost numbing type mm-hmm. of 
type of thing. But is there a sharp pain Mm -hmm. that's the thorn-like pain? And what is the the thorn-like pain for us as well? So that would be, um, that'd be be good for me to do. Yeah. (laughs) Just to be self-reflective enough about, you know, what what does actually trouble me? What does actually stress me out? What does actually cause a a, a pain and you know hopefully I mean, this would be great and you said you said in your sermon that everybody has something mm-hmm. but maybe you're listening to this and, and maybe the thing that you have is not you know com- relative to someone else's difficulty is not that not that much yeah. great great yeah but awesome. it's not it's not it's not, it's not nothing. nothing it's not nothing right it's, you know the saying of yeah. my my assistant's door in, in my first church she had a saying that says it's only minor surgery if it's happening to someone else that's right <laughs> you know? no that's true so if it's just if it's if it's minor compared to someone else it's still your thing so the question would be what is your thing that you are dealing with and that's you know that's a great point is sometimes we tend to diminish our own stress because we we do the comparative thing in reverse you know we talked about comparison a few weeks ago the the idea of comparing ourselves to other people and and coming trying, up less, try, yeah, and, and, less and, and I think the same thing happens with our stress. Well, we diminish the stress that we feel because it's not as bad as someone else. Yeah. You know, like you mentioned your 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 friend with bladder cancer. Well, I'm like, I, you know, my stress is not bladder cancer stress. I mean, that's that's high level stress, but it's again, it's not nothing. Yeah. And so writing, I think writing that out, especially the next couple of days, if you're if you're in Florida. And you got nothing else to do, writing out where your stress, where where the stress points, and and maybe it is the storm, you know. And I would even go and say, try to try to write out why is it stressing you out, and and look through those things. Good and question. Is it is it because of you know past experience, which is totally valid, yeah. totally legitimate reason to be stressed, right? Uh, yeah. But is it? Is it an imagined stress, or is it an imagined source? Point? Is it fear? I mean, you take take it to the to the extreme. Is it fear of death that yeah. this thing might kill me? Yeah. This thing might kill someone someone I I, I love, you know, my family. Real, yeah. Those are real issues. But then ask the question: Okay, other people face life threatening things. Other people have situations where their family members are at risk, but they're not in any kind of near as level stress over these things as you are. Mm-hmm. So. That may be the case that you're stressing out over the, the possible risk of life. Well, why does that bother you? Yeah. And then what does that say to you about yeah. what, how you think about life and how you think about death and yeah. how you think about what lies beyond all these all these larger you know eternal yeah. you know, questions? It'd be it'd be a good exercise to do the keep asking why. Yeah, keep asking why. Okay, why? Do, why, do what, the what's little three do the little three year old thing. Why? 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 why, why? why? I, I then, hate. Let me tell you. Yeah. I. I this is this this is a bonus for this this uh this armchair po- uh, preaching today. The bonus is this, uh, I I use the five whys W H Y S. I use the five whys all the time. Why does that bother you? Yeah. And then you're just going to give me an answer because I'm afraid of death. Yeah. Oh, well, other people have the same situation. They're not anxious about this, but you are. So what is it about being afraid of death that, that, that bothers you? That's the second why. Mm-hmm. By the time you if some, have some version of asking that why question three or four or five times, you've gotten to the real issue. Yeah. And it's not that the, and, and we're not, when, we, when we're saying this, it's not a diminishing that those are anxious point pain points, right? It, it's, it's a matter of trying to identify what's at the, the heart of the, it. The what's at the heart of it, which yeah. leads to my second Big thing that I would say uh, for for group time or individual time is say, what's the purpose? Yeah. If, in fact, as we both said, uh, you know, be radically uh, accepting of our broken pieces and know that we can honor those broken pieces, know that those things can be used to do something, that God would do something beautiful mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. And then the question is, what is that what beautiful is that? thing? Yeah. And my, my question is, what could be the purpose? What could be the purpose? In, in any of this stress or anxiety or this thorn, this pain point mm-hmm. that you're feeling, what is what is God up to? And I think a great way to kind of a, a good thought experiment for people to get to there, because if you're in the middle of a stress, right? So if you're in the middle, like, let's just take the hurricane, because that's at the forefront of my mind right now. Yeah. So, so it, it may be difficult while you're facing down the track to think about what good could come of that, sure. what beautiful could come of it. But what we can do is look back at how the pain points yeah. and the broken pieces have become beautiful in other areas. Yeah. You know, like I, I always go back to the fact that, you know, I was a collegiate cross country runner for, for two years. One year I had to redshirt because I had a ruptured appendix. And so I had 
take six weeks off. Then the next year I ran, but uh, the the summer before I ran my sophomore year, I had a pretty bad knee injury, had to have knee surgery. So my sophomore year was not nearly as productive as I thought it was going to be. Turned out to, to be the point where the doctor recommended I had to stop running competitively. It broke me. I mean, it broke me. I mean, because that's who I was. I mean, that's why I mean, yeah. I, that's why I went to Florida Southern. I thought that was my I went to Florida Southern because they let me run, run on the cross country team. And there was a possibility of a scholarship and all this. I didn't choose other schools because that wasn't a possibility. So when after my sophomore year, I couldn't run. I was like, I'm, what who, am I, gonna do who now? am I, you yeah. know, what do I do? Well, yeah. I can look back at that and go, if that had not taken place, if God had not, you know, you talked about the source of the of Paul's thorn, which is another, whew, you know, is it a messenger of Satan? Is it, you know, if God had not allowed me to go through that situation. I wouldn't have gone, I, I would definitely not have met my wife, my now wife. I, I definitely, even if I had met her, I wouldn't have had, because collegiate athletes are all about their collegiate sport. And that's all you, those are the only people you hang out with. Those yeah. are the only people you see. I definitely wouldn't have developed, been able to develop her. She would have dumped me so fast because like <laughs> I, I was running at five o'clock in the morning and yeah. four o'clock in the afternoon. You got to spend some time with me, yeah. Mr. Zach. Right. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have gotten into ministry at the same level as I yeah. was because I, I, I... You wouldn't have had time for that. I wouldn't have had time for it. So yeah. all those different... the, the You back, and me sitting here would not probably be happening yeah. right now. And, yeah. and so... Looking back at the broken play, but I was devastated in the moment. You know where we see that a lot. The, the the point that you're making about looking backwards is where you'll see the you know the the, the providence of God is is twenty twenty when you look backwards. Yeah. You see see got the hand of God. Uh, Thursday nights. Yeah. To celebrate recovery. Oh, Our recovery friends talk about this all the time. I mean, what does God do? God yeah. takes some takes messes. I mean, just messes. bottomed out, ruined your family, ruined your marriage. Broke, you know, financially ruined everything's ruined. Body is ru- ruined off time, and takes those very messes and turns them into into just make. Yeah. It's the, literally the ashes uh, to beauty uh, yeah. thing. It's, they, it makes beautiful things out of them, and there's there's such redemption that happens with with that. Yeah. And it's hard uh, to your. I think your larger point is that it's hard to see it in the moment. Yeah. It's hard. You know, if the wind, you know Thursday morning early, the wind's going to be blowing pretty hard. It's right going to be hard to see the Lakeland. beauty in that. <laughs> and we may be thinking more about whether that tree is going to snap or whether yeah. our, any water is going to get somewhere, if you're listening, yeah. where you have water issues, uh, than, than anything. But looking back, we ought to be able to see that God, you know, I, I couldn't see it right then, but I, I now see that God yeah. has made, made, a, made a ministry even yeah. out of it. Now, I think about this. How many, how many people do you know? Uh, I don't know a lot of them personally, but I've heard a lot, certain a lot of stories of where their marriage was on the rocks. Yeah. And and they are the most fierce advocates for those whose marriages are starting to, are on the rocks. They're, yeah. they're they're there. They turn it into a, a, a whole thing that said, "Look, we were there, and now and now you're there, we're, but we we are not we're not there anymore. And you can be somewhere way better." So that that's the I think the what what could be the purpose? It could be that God wants to, to yeah. use that for His glory in other ways. Yeah, and I think I think again going back to the journaling point. If you can't if you can't see forward to how the current stress might turn into something beautiful, start backwards. You know, start behind and start to write out. Okay, well, if this if God hadn't allowed me to go through this season and allowed this brokenness, then this wouldn't have happened. Then this wouldn't happen. And then you can say, okay, well, maybe then God's going to do something here, and this yeah. could this is one something yeah. that it could look like. This is what it could be. You know, it's like we've seen the storm come through and then seeing communities come together in incredible ways. Yeah. And I think, you know, in a very divisive time that we live in, and especially in election season, election cycle, uh, this is a, I mean, I, I, I listen, I, I was doing sandbags uh, yeah. yesterday and I guarantee you the lady I was helping with her sandbags, we probably did not see eye to eye, uh, th- you know, from a, from a political standpoint, but it didn't matter because this lady needed help with her, her sandbags. And, uh, so yeah. I helped her and yeah. then there were other people that, that helped us, you know, people helping each other and yeah. you don't get to see that. So, um, that's not the only thing but that's no that's great things, yeah. that's great um well john you know there are a lot lots to do the next uh, 24 hours um if anyone has missed this week 
uh, messages in our series or any one of our ser- uh, any one of our messages in this series or previous series, head to our website, fbclakeland.org, to the worship page, the sermon archive tab. If you have the Church Center app and you are connected to First Presbyterian Church Lakeland, you can see the sermon uh, page right there at the bottom of the, uh, the, the home screen there. And uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, uh, the, the bell icon so you can be notified when a new episode drops. You can also find us on youtube.com backslash FBC Lakeland where we host a variety of videos, including the video yes. of this podcast, which we have been doing consistently now for this, it, assuming this third this, or fourth week, this, yeah. assuming this works, this will be the fourth week. Yeah. And this is the only repeat angle, I think, so far. Someone <laughs> was like, you, you've done it three weeks and it doesn't look the same anytime. I was like, well, we've just been in different <laughs> situations. So uh, anyway, Pastor John, um, praying that you uh, weather this, uh, the next 24, 48, 72 you hours as well. Uh, well. You as well. So, um, and uh, everybody listening, we're praying for you as well. Yeah. And, and be checking our, our, our social media pages. We're going to be posting some content um, even in the next few moments. We're going to be going live, but and that video will live there. Um, but we're going to be trying to post some content the next uh, day or so that is just more encouraging and yeah. prayer-focused and things like that. So uh, thank you, Pastor John, for hanging out a little bit uh, thank today. Thank you, Pastor Tech. You're do, doing a great job with this. Thank you so as much. As always. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Yeah.